As designers, it's important for the websites we design to look good on any screen size. In a world where there are many different screen sizes, it would be impossible for us to design for them all. So instead, we use responsive design to make sure that websites look great regardless of the screen size. Responsive design can be very overwhelming to begin with. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to easily set up your responsive grid, and I'll be sharing tips on how to ensure that your designs are suitable for scaling. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Chilly and I'm a senior UX UI designer based in London. So what is responsive design? Before smartphones came out, websites were all one size, desktop. They were the same size regardless of the size of your screen. So if you had a big desktop, it would be very zoomed out. And if your desktop was quite small, then the design would be more zoomed in. So when smartphones came out, the designs that were meant for desktop were just compressed onto mobile sizes and this was simply unusable. It looked terrible and you had to zoom in to read and navigate. There are still some websites that look like that today. Today, there are many different screen sizes. This makes our work as designers and developers difficult to design for them all. Responsive UI design is an approach to web development that prioritizes designing interfaces that adapt to different devices and screen sizes. The goal is to ensure that websites look great and function seamlessly on any device with a desktop, tablet, or smartphone. This is where breakpoints come in. Responsive design uses breakpoints to determine where a layout of a website changes based on the screen size. There are specific measurements where your design will start to shrink and rearrange depending on the size of your screen. Breakpoints allow us to move between layout sizes fluidly. The layout slowly shrinks and then it changes. There is no one standardized rule for the sizes of breakpoints, as it will depend on how you want your layout to behave at different sizes. Here are some examples of breakpoints. You don't need many breakpoints, usually one for tablet and one for mobile. You might also want to consider landscape sizes for mobile and tablet. Let me show you how breakpoints work. So I'm using a 13 inch MacBook Pro. So this is desktop size, and I'm going to make the browser smaller to mimic different screen sizes. This is Dribbble, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. At the moment, you see four columns of images. As we make this smaller, um, that's one breakpoint. You see three columns instead. And then as we make that smaller again, that is another breakpoint, two columns. And then you then get to one column. Next, let's look at Monzo, which is a bank. And already when we make it slightly smaller, we can see one breakpoint where the title became smaller. And then the next breakpoint where this badge sits under the button and now the button is now the full width of this block. And now it's just shrinking. And here's another breakpoint where the layout flips and the menu now goes into a mobile menu. And now the last breakpoint where everything is stacked on top of each other. So that was quite a lot of breakpoints. Next is Revolut, another bank, and we'll see how that behaves. So we're making it smaller. So we don't get a breakpoint until we get to this stage and the image completely changes. So instead of having two images side by side, we have one image at the top and everything now is stacked. So that's what it looks like at that break point. And also the menu has changed into a burger menu. And was there a change there? So now everything, all the other tiles underneath are now stacked underneath. So I think that's the other break point and that's, that's it. So not as many breakpoints as Monzo has, but you saw how the hero image changes. Another thing I want to look at is full width images. So when an image is full width, you'll have to think about how it behaves at different sizes. So I'm going to look at that again. So this is a blog piece. Um, so it only has one breakpoint. You have to think about how the image is going to crop at the different sizes not just for smaller screens, but also for larger screens, because if I zoom out and this will mimic really, really large screens, if this continued to zoom in, the image would start to get distorted. So I think that's why it's now in a container. 
maybe it should have been more center aligned. Another thing to think about when it comes to wide websites is making sure that the text is not too wide, that is contained only within a few columns because it would be very difficult to read if it would span across the whole website in the same way the image does. Should you be designing mobile or desktop first? Mobile first was a buzz term a few years ago, but not so much now. Ultimately, they both need to function well. There is no right or wrong on which one you start with, but the layout you choose first will probably affect the other's design. It's about knowing your audience and your personas. So for the particular website you are working on, where will most of the audience be? Yes, people spend a lot of time browsing on their mobile phones, but is that where they best convert? I used to work for a luxury e-commerce retailer, and even though we got a lot more traffic on mobile, most people checked out on their desktop. Through research, we realized that people were browsing and saving items on their wish list on mobile, but would go home and make the final purchasing decision on their desktop after viewing larger images. This meant for the browsing blog and the editorial part of the website, the mobile design should be prioritized and the desktop should be prioritized for checkout. But ultimately, they both need to look and function well. Let me show you how to set up responsive grids in Figma. We will be using the eight point grid system where we use increments of eight pixels for sizing and spacing. If you're not familiar with the eight point grid system, I have a video explaining, which I will link somewhere up there and in the description below. On desktop, you select that, go into layout grid and add a grid. Then you change it to columns. For desktop, we need 12 columns. And then next we're gonna do the gutters, which are the little swim lanes in between. For that, we use 16, which is a multiple of eight. But you can use anything that's a multiple of eight. Along with the margin as well, that can be 32. Or if you want your design to be a bit more tighter in, you can go 40 or even down to 80, as long as it's a multiple of eight. So we're gonna leave it at that. For tablet size, we use eight columns. So change that to columns and then press eight. Gutter, same size as desktop. And margin, you can make it 80, which is gonna be quite tight. Or you make that a little bit less and maybe let's do 40 for your iPad. And then for your mobile, we are gonna have four columns. Margin of 16 and the gutters of eight. So those are your responsive grids. And if it's on a stretch here, you can see that as you're making this smaller and bigger, it will stretch with the size of the frame. Another thing you can do is save these presets within your Figma file as styles. You go here, you press this plus sign on the grid style, and then we can call this desktop. Do the same with this. There it is there, and this is. And do the same. What this means is that when you create a new frame with like desktop layout, you can then just add on those layout grids like that. And a shortcut to hide this on Mac is Control G. It hides and makes them visible again. To create horizontal grids, we add another grid and then we do rows. This one's a little bit tricky. We want this to be at the top. Count should be auto so that it fills. And then we want all of these to be eight and eight. There it is. So that means when you are designing, you fill everything to the columns and then also you use the horizontal ones to guide you horizontally as well. You can also save the rows one as well. So if we go here and we save that and then we name rows, that means we can 
apply it to everything else. For some reason, when you have a style grid on, you can't add more on top, but that's okay. Just use this to detach the style. It won't get rid of it. And then you can add another one on top of it. So here we're going to then select rows and then we will do the same with mobile. Oops. Here is a landing page I designed and we are going to design the mobile version of it. Tablet is basically the same, just a little bit more squashed, but with a burger menu instead. Um, let me put on the grid so that you can see how it compares. I started putting together the mobile layout. When it comes to responsive design, it's not just about squashing things and making them smaller. You have to think about stacking them vertically like building blocks. So this is a building block, this is one as well. And then these are gonna be on top of each other. This will shrink. And these are gonna be stacked on top of each other and we'll still keep the card. So if we take these, I'm gonna copy those and pop them here. This is where auto layout will become very helpful. So I'm gonna put them in an auto layout. Then I'm gonna make it vertical. We're gonna make these 32, which is a multiple of eight. And we will pop them in the card. When it comes to the size of the text, you will have to make the title smaller. However, the paragraph text tends to stay the same. So around 20 or 16 is a good paragraph size. And then you just stack everything else on top of each other. I've kept the paragraph sizes the same and the size of the button the same. And it's just the subtitles and titles that are made smaller. Everything is stacked. And it's also good to think about the functionality on mobile. So. Here I've changed these left and right arrows to, to stack underneath the cards. Another thing you can do on mobile as you are scaling your screen size down is get rid of any unnecessary images if you feel like it. So because I felt like this layout was very long, I didn't think this image was needed when in this size. So I got rid of it and just kept it simple. So here are all three sizes of my layouts. This means I have two breakpoints. One on tablet where most of the layout looks exactly like desktop, just smaller, but the testimonials look like the mobile layout where the left and the right arrow are stacked underneath it. And then we have a fully mobile layout where everything is stacked on top of each other. If you have found this video helpful, please help me out by hitting the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and check out my other videos to help you become a pro at designing.